We're in section 9.6. All right, so we've talked several times, we've talked about the definition of a circle, and we're gonna be using that today. I, every time we talked about it, I said this is the definition of a circle, we'll use it later, uh, so today is, today is later. Um, so we've said several times in the past that a circle is all points, that are the same distance from a center. We call the point, the, some point called the center. And the distance is our radius. So what we're going to do today is use the distance formula. We're talking about a distance. We have points for our for points on our circle and for our center. And we're going to come up with an equation for the circle, like y equals mx plus b, sort of. So here's our circle. And we're going to start with our circle with the center. We'll start with our center at the point. Zero, 0, And we'll put our radius here in red. So there's our radius. So our center is 0, 0. And the radius equals r. Well, if we're, if we're on a graph, this point on the circle has some coordinates, x, y. We don't necessarily know what they are. They're just some points that's on our circle. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take this and we're going to draw a little triangle. And this is a 90 degree angle. The length of this side of the triangle, I'm just going from 0 over x, and here I'm going 0 up y. So this side of the triangle is x, this side of the triangle is y. And I'm going to use the Pythagorean theorem on this triangle. This is a right triangle. I'm going to say <coughs> x squared plus y squared equals r squared, just using the Pythagorean theorem. Pythagorean theorem or the distance formula. Distance formula is the same as the Pythagorean theorem. So that's our equation. Anytime we have a circle with the center at 0, 0 and radius r, this is going to be our equation. So this is our equation, circle with center, 0, 0, radius r. Nice, easy equation. x squared plus y squared equals r squared. So anytime you see an equation that looks like this, you know it's a circle. You know its center is at 0, 0, and you know its radius. This tells you everything you need to know about the circle. So an example of a problem when our center is at 0, 0. The problem might ask you, what is the radius? Of the circle x squared plus y squared equals 49. So in this equation, x squared plus y squared equals r squared. r squared is 49. So r equals what? R is the square root of 49, so the radius is 7. 
So in our equation, this side of the equation is always r squared. And this side of the equation is going to tell us something about where our center is. And we'll talk about that in just a second. So r squared is 49, so our radius is 7. Nice, easy problem. And we know that the center is at 0, 0. Yes? Um, why would you just plug in 49 to r and use 39? So our equation says on this side of the equation, this is r squared. So whatever that number is equals r squared. So 49 equals r squared. So we, in order to find the radius, we have to take the square root. So this isn't saying square, um, square 49. We're squaring the radius to get 49. OK? So another, another type of problem that we end up doing with circles is if we know the equation of the circle, we want to know where, where it crosses the x and the y axis. So that, that gives us some information about, about the circle. And we call those the x and y intercepts. So intercept just means where it crosses the axis. And intercepts are, with circles, pretty easy to find. The x-intercept is where it crosses the x-axis. <coughs> and we know that where we cross the x-axis, y equals 0. And the y-intercept is where it crosses the y-axis or where x equals 0. Anywhere on the y-axis, x equals 0. So in order to find our intercepts, we're either going to plug x equals 0 or y equals 0 into our equation and solve for the variable that we're interested in. So the type of problem that we might want us that we might be asked is we're starting with our circle x squared plus y squared equals 49, and we want to find find the intercepts. So we want to figure out where this crosses the x and the y axis. Well, before we, before we actually go through the problem, let's think about it for a minute. If we have x squared plus y squared equals 49, what did we figure out the radius was for in the last example? Seven. Seven. So if I drew a little sketch here, if I, I know my center is at 0, 0, so how far would I go over this way to where I cross the x-axis? 7, the radius, right? And how far would I go this way? 7. 7, so what would be the <coughs> x-coordinate there since I'm going to the left? <coughs> that would be negative 7. How about if I go up? 7. And if I go down? Negative negative 7. So if I made a sketch of my circle, my circle would look kind of like that. So just thinking about it, that's, we would know that it, it would have to cross the x and the y axis at plus and minus 7. So let's, let's go through our problem because it's going to be a little more complicated once we move the center of our circle. So to find the x-intercept, and I'm just going to say x-int, we're going to plug in y equals 0 and solve for x. So I plug in y equals 0 here, I get x squared equals 49. And here's where we need to be a little bit careful. I'm plugging in y equals 0 here. Take the square root of both sides and I get x equals 
when we've talked about angles or lengths or sides of shapes, we always said we had to get a positive answer. Well, here we're talking about coordinates. When we take the square root of a number and we're talking about coordinates, we have to say plus or minus 7. And that's because 7 squared equals 49, and negative 7 squared also equals 49. So when we're talking about coordinates, we can get a positive and a negative answer. So x equals plus or minus 7. Positive 7, minus 7. So we get both of those numbers. And if I do the y-intercept, I'm plugging in x equals 0. Solve for y. Well, it looks exactly the same. When x equals 0, I get y squared equals 49. I take the square root, and I get y equals plus or minus 7. Just like we thought about when we thought about the how the circle has a look. Yeah. If the center is at 0, 0. So our center of our circle here is at the point 0, 0. The next thing we're going to talk about is what happens when we move the center away from 0, 0. But when our center is at 0, 0, that it makes it nice and easy. We just have to think, go over by the radius, go up by the radius, and we're set. So questions so far? All right, let's talk about what happens when we move the center. So the center of our circle is not always going to be at 0, 0. So let's say our center is at the point HK. What's that? This is the center of our circle. Our circle doesn't have to be at 0, 0. I can make a circle up here, and the center is in the middle of the circle, not at 0, 0. So our center is at just at some point HK. <coughs> That's just the x and y coordinates of our, of our center of our circle. And the radius is still R. So we have some circle, and our radius is R. So we're going to do the same thing that we did before. Here's our circle. Here's our center. This is at just at some point hk. This could be 3, 5. This could be negative 2, 1. Just some, some point that's our center. That point is on our circle, xy. And our radius is still r. So everything's the same here. We just have moved the center, and our center isn't at 0, 0 anymore. It's at some point. So we're going to do the same thing that we did last time. Let's draw this triangle. We can use the distance formula or the Pythagorean theorem. They're really the same thing. But this time, rather than the length of this being x, I'm moving from h over to x. So for example, if x were 8 and h were 2, I'd be moving over x minus h or 8 minus 2, I'd be moving over 6. So this side of the triangle is x minus h. And here I'm going up from k to y. So if this was 10 and this were 2, the length of this would be 10 minus 2, or 8. So the length of that is y minus k. And I'm going to put those in parentheses. And we're going to use the Pythagorean theorem x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals r squared. x minus h is just one side of my triangle. y minus k is the other side of my triangle. Use the Pythagorean theorem, and this is what we end up with. And this is our equation of 
a circle. with center HK and radius R. <coughs> so this, the H and the K just tell us how much we move our, our center away from zero, zero. Now the important thing to remember, there are two main, main things to remember from what we're talking about with circles. From here to here, the signs change. Here this is positive, here it's negative. Here this is positive, here this is negative. So they're opposite signs. And we'll do some examples to kind of reinforce that. This side of the equation always has r squared on it. So whatever the radius is, we square it, and that's going to be our, that side of our equation. So these are opposite signs, and this is always r squared. So let's do some examples using using this equation. I'm going to do try to do one type of example for every type of problem that you that you might be asked on your homework. So for this one, we want to find the center and the radius. And we have a circle x minus 3 squared plus y minus 1 squared equals 20. So we'll do the easy, the, the whole thing is really pretty easy. Let's figure out the radius first. This side of our equation is always r squared. r squared equals 20. So r equals the square root of 20. I'm going to simplify this. This is the square root of 4 times 5, or 2 square root 5. So our radius equals 2 square root 5. To find the center, I'm going to take the number that's with the x here, change its sign. 3. Take the number that's with the y here, change its sign. 1. That's all there is to it. Take the number that's with the x, change its sign. Take the number that's with the y, change its sign. Always change the sign. Mm -hmm. Yep, just change the signs. And this side, again, is always this radius squared. So we take the square root to find the radius. All right, let's look at another example. Um, we have x plus 3 squared plus y squared equals 15. Same thing, find the center and the radius. r squared equals what here? 15. <coughs> So r is the square root of 15. I can't simplify the square root of 15 anymore, so our radius is just square root of 15. Our center, take the number that's with the x, change its sign, minus 3. Take the number that's with the y. Well, what number is with y? Are we adding or subtracting anything here? Does it say x plus 1 or x minus 1? No? So what would our number be? 0. We're not adding or subtracting anything. If it were 1, it would be y plus 1 squared or y minus 1 squared. So there's no number here. So that's just a 0. There's no number with the y, so the y coordinate is 0. This is r squared, take the square root to get the radius. Number here, change its sign. Number here, there's no number, so that's zero. So 
with with uh, with the squares. Uh huh. Don't have no. Nope, don't have to square it. Square anything. We just look at this number here, and that tells us our coordinate of our center. Look at the number here, and that tells us the y coordinate of our, our center. All right. Let's look at a problem going the opposite direction. So we have the center and radius, and we want to write the equation. So our center for this circle, the center is 4, negative 5, and the radius is 7. Well, we know that our equation is going to look like x and something squared plus y and something squared equals, and what goes on this side of the equation? R squared. So what would go on this side? 7 squared. This side is always the radius squared. So again, this kind of problem should be easy. Take the number with the x, change its sign, put it right here. Take the number with the y, change its sign, put it right there, and there's my radius squared. So if I rewrite this, I get x minus 4 squared plus y plus 5 squared equals 49. And I'm done. Yeah? Yes. Because if you didn't have the squares, you'd just ha you have the equation of a line, not a circle. So the squares have to go out outside the parentheses here. But all we have to do is write, we know it's x and something squared plus y and something squared equals a radius squared. For the x, take this number, change its sign. For the y, take this number, change its sign. This side is always r squared. So that would be the equation of our circle. Questions on that one? All right, I have a couple more examples to do and then we'll do our constructions. We want to find intercepts. <coughs> of this circle, x plus 1. Plus y minus 1 squared. x plus 1 squared plus y minus 1 squared equals 17. We're going to follow the same procedure for finding the intercepts. And I'm going to do two columns here because we need two answers. So for our x intercepts, we're going to plug in y equals 0, solve for x. And there's just one little twist here when we do this, when our center is shifted. Um, All right, so we're going to, for our x-intercept, we're going to plug in y equals 0. So I get x plus 1 squared plus 0 minus 1 squared equals 17. So I'm going to leave this x plus 1 squared written the way it is. What is 0 minus 1? <coughs> negative 1. Negative 1 squared. Positive 1. Square and neg negative times a negative is a positive. So this is plus 1 equals 17. I'm going to keep this thing that's squared. I'm going to keep it all by itself. So subtract 1. x plus 1 squared equals 16. Now to undo a square, what do I do? Uh, square, root. square root. Take the square root of both sides. This is where I have to be careful. The square root undoes the square, so I get x plus 1 equals, we're talking about coordinates here, so I get a plus and minus 
4. Square root of 16 is 4, and I get a plus and a minus. So now this turns into two problems. x plus 1 equals 4, or x plus 1 equals minus 4. I get one answer for the plus and one answer for the minus. I subtract 1 from both sides here, and I get x equals 3, or I subtract 1 from both sides here, negative 4 minus 1 is x equals negative 5. So I get two answers for my x-intercept. If I wanted to find the y-intercept, I'm going to say x equals 0 and solve for y. I would end up with the same thing, plug, same, same kind of procedure. I'm going to plug in x equals 0. So I get 0 plus 1 squared plus y minus 1 squared equals 17. 0 plus 1 is just 1. 1 squared is 1. 1 plus y minus 1 squared equals 17. Subtract 1. I want this y, this squared part by itself. y minus 1 squared equals 16. Take the square root and I get y minus 1 equals plus or minus 4. Just like we did here. And then we split the problem into 2. y minus 1 equals 4 or y minus 1 equals negative 4. Add 1 to both sides, y equals 5. Add 1 to both sides and I get y equals negative 3. So there would be my intercepts for that circle. Same procedure as we used before, just have to be a little more careful when we when we do this, this part. Yes? Sometimes it'll just say find the intercepts of this circle. If it says find the intercepts, it's asking for the x and the y. Not, not necessarily. Because I could have a circle, um, it just turned out that way here, but if I had a circle like this, I could have a circle with a center here that looks like that. I'd get two x-intercepts and no y-intercepts. Or I could end up with a circle like this, and it could just be tangent to the y-axis and not touch the x-axis, so then I would just end up with one in y-intercept and no x-intercepts. So it doesn't always turn out this way. Okay? All right, questions, other questions on that example? One other kind of problem that you might be asked to solve with circles is a circle through the point, let's say, 2, 3, with center 5, 1. We want to find the equation. Well, we, have the circ we have the center, so we know part of our equation. The center gives us h and k for our equation. So I can start by saying x, change the sign on this number, x minus 5 squared, plus y, change the sign on this number, minus 1 squared. This is, this is my center. I'm just writing my equation. We don't know the radius, so I'm just going to write r squared. So really this problem is about finding the radius. So I started writing my equation. I know that I take whatever is here, change the sign, put it with the x. 
square it, whatever's here, change the sign, put it with the y, square it, and that equals r squared. Well, this point, this 2, 3, gives me an x and a y. I can plug those in to my equation. So I'm going to say 2 minus 5 squared plus 3 minus 1 squared equals r squared. That's my y, and that's my x. 2 minus 5 is negative 3 squared. 3 minus 1 is 2 squared equals r squared. Negative 3 squared equals what? 9. 2 squared is 4, and that equals r squared. So 13 equals r squared. So my equation, x minus 5 squared plus my y minus 1 squared equals 13. This is r squared. So we have our center, we have a point, we can figure out our equation. Questions on that one? All right. We have two constructions to learn today. So I reminded you uh, last week, and I sent a reminder home on the weekend, that you needed a compass today. So we're going to talk about two constructions. Constructions having to do with uh, with circles this time. So if you brought your compass, hopefully you did. Um, you can follow along. Otherwise, the video will be on the website. You will definitely need to. If you don't have your compass, you'll definitely need to follow along with the video so that you can do these constructions. The first one. We're going to circumscribe a circle around a triangle. So what I'm going to do is, these are nice, nice easy steps to follow. So I'm going to write up the steps, and then I'm just going to go through the construction a couple of times. The constructions we have learned, already learned. We've learned all of these constructions before. So we're just applying them in a specific way. So we've already learned how to do all these constructions in the first semester. So none of the constructions are new. So our first step, to circumscribe a circle around a triangle, is construct a perpendicular bisector, bisector of two sides. So we're going to construct the perpendicular bisector to two sides of the triangle. Where they meet is the center of our circle. Our third step the radius is from the center to a vertex. So for this construction, we construct two perpendicular bisectors. We know how to do that, or we have learned how to do that. We find where they meet, that's the center of our circle, and then we make our radius from the center to one vertex. All right, so let's look at a couple of these. And guys, put the phones away, please. So we're going to start with a triangle.
we are going to construct a perpendicular bisector to two sides. So I'm going to grab my compass to construct a perpendicular bisector. We set our compass on one end, open, our, open it up more than halfway, make an arc, leave the compass where it is, move it to the other side of the segment, and make another arc. So this is a construction we did last semester. And then I'm just going to connect those two points. Like so. Now we have to do two of these. We're, we're making a circle. So we're going to do this to another side. So we're going to grab our compass again. And I'll do this one in blue. We'll do the perpendicular bisector to this side. So make sure we're open more than halfway across the side. Make my arc. Go to the other side. Make the same arc. We're not moving the compass. And I'll draw, connect those X's. Where those two lines cross is the center of my circle. So where they, where they meet is the center of my circle. Now I'm going to grab my compass. And the radius, or sorry, yes, the radius, do that in green, is from the center. So I'll put my compass at the center to any vertex. So I'll just pick that one. So that's the radius of my circle. And now, draw a circle. And if I would have done my construction perfectly, it would have touched on that vertex also. So my green circle goes all the way around my triangle. And that's what we call circumscribing a circle. Two perpendicular bisectors. The radius is from the center to any vertex. The perpendicular bisector construction we did, we learned last semester. So let's look at let's look at that one again. We'll do another another construction of a circumscribed circle. So we start with any triangle. Construct a perpendicular bisector to two sides. So put our compass here, make sure it's open more than halfway across. Make an arc. Move the compass to the other side. Make an arc. I'm just going to go back over here so they connect. Connect those two. Let me make sure this is long enough. There we go. And we'll do the perpendicular bisector to another side. We'll do this side. Make sure our compass is open more than halfway. Make that arc. Move the compass to the other side. same arc from the other side, and then I'm going to draw that segment. So where those two lines cross is the center of my circle, and the radius is from a vertex to any side, or from, a, from the center to any vertex. So grab my compass again, set it here, go to any vertex.
and draw my circle. And there's my circumscribed circle. So two perpendicular bisectors to any two sides. They meet at the center of the circle. From the center to a vertex is the radius of the circle. Questions on that one? All right, one last construction. We're going to inscribe. <coughs> inside a triangle. So similar idea, we just have slightly different constructions, but they're all constructions we've done before. So I'll list the steps and then we'll go through this construction a couple of times. Um, we're going to construct two angle bisectors. We know how to construct angle bisectors, or we've learned how to construct angle bisectors. Where they meet is the center. Now we have to do one more step to find the radius. We have to construct a perpendicular a perpendicular segment from one side to the center. And this construction is our smiley face. We're going to do our smiley face construction from the center to one side. And then that's going to give us the radius. So the radius is the length of the segment. to the center. So we're going to make two angle bisectors. They meet at the center. From the center to one side of our triangle, we're going to construct a perpendicular segment using our smiley face construction. And that little segment from the center to one side is going to give us our radius. So let's go through this construction. So we're going to start with any kind of triangle. I'll make it kind of big so we can fit a nice circle inside. All right, two angle bisectors. So the angle bisector construction, just as a reminder, I make any arc across the angle. I move the point of my compass to the arc. Make sure the compass is open at least halfway across angle. So we're open almost all the way across there. And now I'm going to make an arc there. Move my compass to the other side. Make an arc there. And make the segment from the vertex to where they cross. I'm going to do this same thing to another angle on my triangle. So the exact same construction. So grab my compass, do this one in red. Make any arc across the angle. Move the point. Move it to the other side. Make the same arc. <coughs> and 
and there's our center. Now to find our radius, we're going to have to construct a perpendicular bisect, a perpendicular segment from this point to one of the sides. So I'm going to do it to this side. So we'll do our smiley face construction from this point to this side. I'm going to grab my compass, do this one in green. i going to undo that one because my compass wasn't open far enough. It has to open at least to the segment. So there's my smiley face. Bring the compass to one side. Make an arc. To the other side, make the same arc. These are all constructions that we learned and did last semester. There's my perpendicular segment, and the distance from the center to the side is my radius. So now I can grab my compass again, I'll make the circle in blue, there's my radius from the center to that point. And now I'm going to draw my circle. And if I had done my construction perfectly, my circle would fit right inside that triangle. So there's my inscribed circle. Two angle bisectors and a perpendicular segment to one side gives me my radius. The perpendicular segment is my smiley face. And that gives us an inscribed circle. Okay, we'll do this entire, I'll do one more example of this entire construction. All right, so let's do one more of these, and then we'll be done. So here's my triangle. Two angle bisectors, it doesn't matter which two angles I do. I can do any, any of the two angles. So I'll do, oops, I won't do that one because my compass goes off the screen. So I'll do this one again. Any arc through the angle, move the points to where the arc crosses the side of the angle. Make sure we're open more than halfway. We're fine here. Draw the arc there. Move the point. Draw the arc there. And there's my one angle bisector. We'll do the next one. Same process. Do that one in red. Any arc across my angle, move the point, make sure we're open more than halfway. Halfway than what? Halfway across the angle. Okay. So I can't, I can't be this far open, I have to be more than halfway across the angle. So there's one side, doesn't matter if you're more. That just makes your, this, these lines further out here. All right, there's the second. There's my center. And now I'm going to do the smiley face construction to this side. So the smiley face construction, set the point of my compass on the center. Make sure it's open at least to the, to the side that we want to do the smiley face to. And then I'm going to make my arc so there's my smiley face. It just has to go through that segment twice. Now I bring it down here, and now the rest of this construction is just like doing a perpendicular bisector. I just open my compass more than halfway across this new segment. Make an arc there. Put 
bring it over here to the other side of the segment, the other side of the smiley face. Make an arc there. And now I'm going to connect the center with that X. And that's going to give me my radius from the center to here. So I grab my compass, set it the point on the center, bring the other side down, there's my radius, and I'll do this in blue, and draw my circle. And again, if I had done everything perfectly, it would touch the inside of the triangle at all three points. Do we need to do it? No, it's, it's, really, it's really hard to take it exactly perfect. But as long as you do all the constructions correctly, that's what, that's what I'm doing. So that's my inscribed circle. Yes? But the radius, the radius is from here to here. That so I could say, it, I want to make sure I measure my radius. If I, if I didn't make that segment, I can measure the radius here, I can measure it here. I just want to make sure I'm getting the radius exactly in the right spot. All right, so those are the two constructions. You will see those two constructions on the test on block day. Any questions? Uh, off the top of my head, I'm not sure. Um, so we have three pieces to our homework today. For 9.6, we have page 614, number 12 through 46 even, 48 and 54. For test review, We have page 625, number 1 through 25 odd, and number 14. We also have a construction practice. And our Mapbox 30 is due on block day as well. So all those pieces.